Hi guys, how's it going? Well, I'm pretty good. I'm uh, kind of suffering through a little bit of a head cold, but doing very well. You know, uh, I see a lot of people that are fighting cooling system problems, and uh, I've done so myself. And I, you know, that can be a real uh, challenge to to work out some kind of an overheating problem. So I wanted to talk about something that I see a lot, and that is when people are uh, trying to diagnose and resolve some sort of overheating issue, they tend to throw parts at, at, at that and uh, with limited success. So I wanted to specifically talk about water pumps in this video and then we'll, we'll cover a little bit more after that part of it, but uh, I see people that are dealing with an older car like this dark sport, so maybe something newer. It's not so common now with newer cars and trucks, but they tend to be pretty reliable as far as cooling systems go. But usually on these older vehicles, it's something like this, a project or a uh, second car or something, truck maybe that people are uh, working on. They're trying to get an overheating issue taken care of. So let's talk about that a little bit. One thing I see a lot is people when they uh, get into that, they start tending to throw parts at it and have a little bit of an overheating issue and they'll start uh, put a water pump and they'll put a thermostat and then they put a radiator cap on and then maybe eventually a radiator and, and in my experience that there's a lot of water pumps that have been replaced needlessly along with radiator caps. So let's talk about that and find out why I think that. The reason is that a water pump you see right here, this is the outside part of this water pump on this 318 Mopar. The water pump, in most cases, is just simply a metal housing, as you see there, that has a shaft going through it. And on the outside, it has a way to mount some sort of a pulley and a belt. And in this case, this has got an engine-driven fan, but that doesn't run the water pump. It's just kind of vice versa. It just runs off the water pump. And then inside of that, there's some seals and some bearings and you have a little most cases it's a it's metal it's called an impeller inside of that water pump and that impeller is like I said it's always usually metal but it's basically you look up what an impeller is it's just a piece of circular metal disc type of a thing that has uh, veins made onto it so when it rotates it moves fluid it moves coolant that's how the coolant circulates through the engine so that's basics of what a water pump is and how it works. The engine runs and the coolant, the water pump is filled with coolant and it circulates and cools the engine. It brings the heat out of the engine into the radiator where it's dissipated. <clears throat> so let's talk about how a water pump can fail and how it does not fail. There's usually about three ways a water pump can fail. The first and most common way a water pump will fail is it will have a seal leak which means there's a seal that is in place on the shaft that goes through this thing that keeps the coolant from coming outside here. You know, it's kind of a lip seal type thing and it just rides on the steel shaft in there. And that's what keeps it watertight. So that that's usually the most common thing. It'll get old and there's a little weep hole up underneath the bottom of this thing and it'll just start dripping. So you know the water pump's done for when that happens. That's about the most common. The second way a water pump can fail is probably the second most common is the bearings can go bad in it. And when they just start to fail a little bit, you'll hear sort of a noise. It kind of makes kind of a shoot, 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 shoot noise. It's kind of an unusual noise, but you'll know it when you hear it. And that means your bearings are drying out. And if you keep on running it, what will eventually happen is that this bearings will fail and the water pump shaft will start rattling around in here and if you run it long enough if it doesn't end up slinging the belt off from all that happening it'll come apart and that fan goes right into the radiator so there's your radiator trashed the third way and the very least common way a water pump can fail utterly fail is that the impeller inside the water pump which is made onto that steel shaft will somehow become disconnected from the shaft and 
you know, water pump's designed so it can't just come right out. In some cases they may, the shaft may r run its way out and do the same thing I just talked about, hitting the radiator. But normally it's not, but that impeller can come off and that's much, much, much more common on water pumps that have a plastic impeller. And let me just say this, this is my own opinion, but I think any manufacturer who uses or used a plastic impeller on a water pump is utterly stupid for doing so because I've never seen it have good a good ending on that. <clears throat> That's known uh, Suzuki and maybe some BMWs, and I know Volkswagen and Audi for a fact use them, and so it's pretty disastrous when the uh, impeller comes off or breaks apart. Sometimes they won't come off; they just break. They get old. The plastic gets old and breaks, and when that happens. Uh, you quit getting any coolant circulation. The engine runs, but there's no, you know, you've seen on my other videos, you, those of you who follow along, me and Uncle Phil joke around a little bit. He talks about that the coolant in his car is not doing any of this. Well, that's true. That's exactly what happens. When the water pump breaks apart in there, the impeller comes off if it's plastic, uh, then you don't get any of this. You don't circulate any water, so you have immediate catastrophic overheating. So that's the way that a water pump can fail. Now here's the way that a water pump does not fail, and a lot of people miss this. They tend to replace water pumps under the false assumption that the water pump is somehow wearing out. Well, a water pump like this, if it's not leaking, if it's not wobbling, it's not making noise, and you can see water coming out of the engine, then the water pump is not failed, period, okay? so. You know, when you have, especially like if you have a gradual overheating problem, like if you climb a mountain and the car or truck starts to run a little warm, or you sit in traffic and it starts to creep up, that's just a, you know, that's not what I would call catastrophic overheating. That's just, you know, that is overheating, but it's running a little bit warm. Yeah, but that's not bad, bad. So that'll tell you right then, your water pump's working. So going to change a water pump, that you, especially when you take it off and you look at what I just told you, everything looks good and you know it may look old but it's not leaking, the impeller's there, it's not wobbling, then you're wasting your time replacing a water pump, your time and your money. I don't know how many water pumps have been replaced that didn't need to be. But people keep on believing this. They keep thinking that somehow an uh, all-metal water pump will start losing its efficiency, and that has to be causing overheating. It's that's totally false and incorrect. Don't believe that for a second. If it's not exhibiting the three modes of failure that I just oh yeah look at that three modes of <laughs> three modes of failure that I just illustrated to you then it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Now, like I said, guys, that does not apply if you have a car that uses a plastic impeller on the water pump. So uh, that's a different scenario. So if you have one of those Volkswagens or Audis and BMWs, whatever else is using those, and that thing is overheating bad, I mean, it won't run without overheating, then you need to look into that. But it's pretty easy. You know, you can always, with a cool engine, you can take your radiator cap off. Now, some of the foreign cars, like a Volkswagen, they don't have one. They, those. Those SOBs are hard to work on anyway, so but if you have a, a conventional engine like this one with a radiator cap, my Infinity up there is so awesome, it has two radiator caps. Uh, you know, if you fill the water up, then run it, you know, your thermostat should open, especially those of you who may have already decided to try to cure an overheating problem taking the thermostat out, which is not a good idea, then you should see water circulate. This radiator hose should get hot, so you can kind of use your best judgment on that to think if you need to dig into the water pump, but don't don't go replacing a water pump on one of these cars, trucks like this, when it's not failed. It's not going to help you. Same goes for radiator air cap. I don't know how many people I've heard say, tell other people, first thing that happens when over, it's overheating, it's starting to run hot. Replace your radiator air cap, replace your radiator air cap. Well, I agree. A radiator air cap needs to be in good shape. This one is. It's got two seals on it. It's in good shape. It's sealing. But the thing is, here's the what here's the reason that cooling systems are pressurized. Cooling systems are pressurized because that helps avoid uh, coolant boil over. 
that, that raises your forever pound of pressurization that you have on your cooling system that increases the boiling point of the coolant so it's if you have a system that's not pressurized and it's overheating it is not because of the radiator cap and I'm not talking about you know you run it 250 degrees and it boils over I'm talking about if you have an immediate overheating it's not the radiator cap so don't fall for that one either here's what I found that causes 90% of the overheating Now, in some rare cases, it's the thermostat, but that's pretty rare, too. All this other stuff people name off, it's usually not the problem, especially if you got you don't have a thermostat, you know. But 90% of the times, it's this dude right here, your radiator. There's no saying goes. If you have an engine that tries to overheat under load, like climbing a hill, or even at highway speeds, you know, it tries, the further you go, the warmer it gets. That's usually always a cooling system capacity problem. That means capacity is this thing, the radiator. Nowhere else. Capacity. That means this radiator's got gunked up enough that it can't transfer the heat out of the coolant fast enough. It runs hot at, at cruising speed. You slow down, it cools down. All right? So what's going on if you have the opposite condition? If you have an engine that, as long as you're out on the highway moving, it stays cool. Climb a hill, stays pretty cool. It may not stay as cool going up a hill as it should, but it stays pretty cool. All right, but you get in the city and you slow down and idle, and up goes the temperature. Well, usually that is because an airflow problem. That means something's going on that you're not moving enough air. This car here has a thermostatic cooling fan on it. And that thing, it reads the temperature of the air coming through the radiator. When it gets hot enough, it kicks in and engages and cools the, the engine down. So those, that's the formula for figuring out where your cooling problem is. But anyway, don't go, uh, don't go throwing a water pump on. Unless you have a, a legitimate need for a water pump, it's leaking, it's making noise, it's rattling. Or it just, you've established beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's not moving coolant, period, then replace it. If it's doing those three things, replace it. Any of them. Otherwise, don't. So, okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. Got any questions? Feel free to ask them. Bye.